Dragon Champions is a free-to-play mobile turn-based fantasy RPG which focuses a lot on collecting and powering up your heroes by improving their skills, their gear and a very neat rune system. Dragon Champions has everything you would expect from this type of game. You're able to compete in PvP, able to do raid with your guildmates, able to complete thousands of quests and achievements, tournaments, challenges and it goes on and on and on. In this video guys I will show you what I've accomplished in my 30 days of gameplay. I have reached player level 61 in those roughly 30 days of gameplay, also managed to accumulate over 25,000 gladiator rubies, I was able to complete a good portion of the campaign but kind of left it there for a little bit, almost at 250,000 hero power, total hero power, collected over 20 heroes of each of the two factions, increased their levels plenty of times, bought a bunch of items on the shop, won almost 100 arena battles, and obviously had a lot of fun doing it. There are a lot of features in this game that I want to talk about. I did do two videos on them, 10 things they do better than Raid Shadow Legends, so I will cover some of those points here again because I think they really do affect your overall gameplay. As you can see right here, I have a bunch of hero and I have a bunch of energy. The instant auto battle feature is one of my favorite things in this game. It really allows you to be able to burn through your resources uh, when you don't have a lot of time to play, okay? So games that require too much attention, especially in the mobile gaming industry, in my opinion, just don't work that well. Games like Raid Shadow Legends offer a good balance. This game, I think, does it even a little bit better because the auto battle really allows you to just literally spend over like, what, 500 energy in the span of a couple minutes. Well, at the same time, farming some hero stones of some of the better heroes in the game or so that is what I like to believe. You can also farm ability scrolls which is a game changer. Raid Shadow Legends does not allow you to do this consistently. Instead this game really does offer you that every day you can farm some of the ability scrolls to increase the ability of your top heroes. Another great feature in this game just recently added is the ability to save and load specific team layouts. That really helps because it's easy to sometimes forget what you were using for a certain stage. Another great thing about this game, like many of these other games, is that on a daily basis you do get free resources, either in the form of chess, energy, uh, runic energy in this case. You also have a ton of events, some that seem to be uh, timeless, others which are timed, but they're well planned. They tell you well in advance when they're going to come and what they require for you to complete them. This is huge. Raid Shadow Legends does not do this this way. You typically know about, what, 24 hours in advance, and they don't exactly tell you what it is going to be or what it would require. This game instead will tell you what it requires because it's going to force you to basically use all their heroes at your disposal, okay? Not just top 10 heroes or champions in the game and all the rest are completely useless. The gear in this game is more commonly known as runes and it is farmable and I'm not talking about some of the beginner pieces. You can get them from events like right here or from tournaments against other players or even from the marketplace and some of these pieces are literally some of the best in the game. Sure there's still RNG with the stats, main stats and sub stats but it's the fact that you can get some of the better pieces relatively easily. Some of the best heroes like right here are also available in some of the events. In this case it's a legendary event and they basically told us two weeks in advance how to get ready for this. You need a full goblins team of either level 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on all the way up to level 80. And if you want to summon this hero you need a minimum of let's say 145 hero stones so you can get ready for that. That is a big big change compared to a game like Raid Shadow Legends where you always have to hope that you're going to pull a top tier champion from a single shard. In my 30 days of gameplay I've also had the opportunity to purchase two battle passes which I must admit are a lot easier on the wallet. They also offer a fantastic amount of good resources such as ability scrolls such as um, hero stones basically of the newer heroes that were added to the game as well as some of the top tier runes which could roll in your favor and become one of your best pieces. The next feature I want to talk about is the PvP in Dragon Champions, which is very interesting. You typically have the arena, which you have five tickets every day, or you have these tournaments. 
these tournaments are only active for two or three days and they require specific heroes in order to compete in them. And if you're able to, let's say, finish first or in the top three or maybe in the top 10, you get better and better rewards, which are typically worth it. This is where all the competing goes on. It's not easy to keep up because I'll admit they're doing a very good job at forcing you to basically work on every hero, not just only a core uh, team of, let's say, five heroes. You usually have to always kind of bring them all up or power them all up at the same time. And if you always want to try and finish first or in the top three, expect to have to spend a decent amount of money. That's the reality of these types of games. They do force you to spend because you're competing against other players. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't have to spend. You can accept that you will be in the top 100 and it'll, it'll be that. You will just have less rewards. But they make it very encouraging to basically finish in the top players because the rewards get better and better and better. They have things like ability scrolls, Drake coins, which are your equivalent of gems, other types of resources that you can spend in the shop for specific hero stones. So in the end, they make a big difference. You definitely want to try and position yourself as high as possible, but you're certainly not going to try and win them all. Unless, of course, you plan on becoming a Kraken and literally going all out on getting all the champions as quickly as possible and maxing out all their skills. In my case, I tend to only try and complete the ones or position myself very high in the ones that I have the heroes for. You will see that you can sometimes reuse some of your heroes, but in most cases, it ends up being somewhat of a hit or miss. Another great feature in Dragon Champions, which I talked about in my other videos, is the tower. This is like 12 rooms, basically, uh, that get progressively harder. It starts off pretty easy, I must admit, on the normal mode. I still haven't really tried the hard mode. Actually, I did, and I kind of failed, so I'm sticking to the normal mode for now. But basically what it is that each room is going to have a harder and harder team of a mix of different heroes. You yourself will be able to use the team that you want on most of the rooms except the side rooms. The side rooms will require either a specific faction like the clans or the order, or they will require a specific race like a full goblins team or a full pandas team or a full humans team and so on and so on. Obviously, you want to complete this every day because it provides a ton of extra resources. Once again, hero stones and ability scrolls, which allow you to then uh, power up your champions or heroes even more. So a very, very cool feature in Dragon Champions that Raid Shadow Legends does not have, and I would like for them to have something similar. Maybe it's in the works, maybe it's this so-called Void Tower, but for now, Dragon Champions does it a lot better. The last topic I want to talk about in Dragon Champions is, of course, all of the different currencies or resources. There's a lot more than compared to Raid Shadow Legends, but you do have this common one, which is gold or the equivalent of silver in Raid Shadow Legends, which is the one that I found uh, running out of the most often. But it's typically normal because as you compete in the higher and higher stages of this tournament, you end up having to spend more and more gold improving the skills, improving the gear, and improving the rune system, which is the equivalent of the gear system in Raid Shadow Legends. Of course, if you want to buy all those top end runes from the marketplace, you need even more gold. So I often found myself spending all my Dracoins into these chests, which are random. You have the chance of getting either a lot of gold or not at all. So uh, it's a big hit or miss, and that is the part of RNG that I always don't like as much in a game. But I understand that this is how it works and you can't have it all, okay? So um, in my basically 30 days of gameplay, I ended up doing this a couple of times where I go and I basically um, purchase maybe 10 to 15 of these gold chests because as you buy more and more, you get a 20% or 25% or 30% all the way up to 50% boost on your next one. So your goal is to typically try and hit it big towards the end, uh, which has happened to me once or twice, but but most of the time it doesn't. So I don't exactly know at which rate you can get the biggest amount of gold in the game, but let me tell you this, you will need a lot. Because you always work on all your heroes almost at the same time, uh, you end up always have to redirect your resources for the next 
thing you want to complete, whether it be a tournament or whether it be one of those legendary events. In the end, guys, I really enjoyed my overall experience in Dragon Champions, and I will continue to play this game. I am enjoying it because it's refreshing compared to Raid Shadow Legends, and because I can play very fast every day. I don't have to spend a ton of hours trying to figure out a build or trying to re-gear all my heroes because it's pretty straightforward. It's almost very linear in the sense that you kind of know what's upcoming, therefore you kind of just do the work, right? Kind of like the daily grind without having to constantly hope, well, today be the day that I pull the best champion in Raid Shadow Legends, this doesn't really happen in this game. Instead, it's literally just every day a little bit progressing forward until you become stronger and stronger and stronger. Some of you guys might not like this, but having played Raid for a while, to be honest, guys, it, like I said, it is refreshing. It is nice to be able to kind of see your progress and directly see the impact of your money spent, not just gambling. Raid feels a lot like gambling. Dragon Champions feels like uh, if you do pay to play or even pay to win, you are buying convenience and you will directly be stronger after putting money into the game. All right, so before I let you go, guys, let me remind you that you can use my promo code before level 15 if you want to have some free in-game rewards. You simply have to enter the word Bionic in the promo code uh, section within the settings, okay? It's going to give you the following rewards, which should give you a little boost when you're starting out. I also want to know what you think about this video, my review of this game. Did I miss anything crucial along with the other two videos that I did before when comparing uh, Dragon Champions specifically to Raid Shadow Legends? which I also did in this video because I feel it's sort of like the standard right now. Yes, this game does not have top end graphics because we're comparing it to Raid Shadow Legends, but in the end, I think they still do a lot of great, great things, and I think you guys should give it a shot. So hit me up in the game if you want to also join perhaps my clan. The Bionic Collective is still open and recruiting some players. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later.